Just thought I'd get this Martin out and let people see how it sounds. Now, it's probably the best sounding Martin there's ever been. A uh, little story about the way this thing is made. I'll try to get where you can see. I don't know if this camera's going to pick it up, but the grain on the top of this thing is about a quarter inch wide. The fastest growing stand of Adirondack spruce that Martin ever found. And I don't know how many guitars they made out of that stand of trees, but this was one of them. And uh, there was a article written about this particular model of guitar that had those wide spruce grains and what a beautiful sound they had. Matter of fact, this guitar was used at Must Show Sound on Linda Ronstadt's album that she did there, well, first one she did there. And uh, I loaned it to the studio quite a bit for Jimmy Johnson to do acoustic stuff with. This is a guitar that was famous for being played in the bathroom. <laughs> That's where they found that the bathroom was probably the best studio for acoustic guitar. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson loved this guitar. Oh, and so many people tried to trade me out of this thing. Oh. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm still struggling with my playing. I've been able to do a little bit, but horse having to get out and put hay in for the horses today and doing a little heavy lifting, I brought a new tool cabinet in to my shop and oh, that was a strain. And after I got through, my hands just shaking like crazy. But anyway, this guitar is the one that uh, uh, I was jamming with Bill Monroe, and uh, of course I was doing my picking on the guitar like a mandolin. I I could do it then. I... I can't do it now, but I can do a little bit every once in a while. But uh, he heard me picking the guitar just like a mandolin. Of course, I learned off of his albums and Doc Watson's albums, uh, Blatton Scruggs, the Stanleys. Uh, and so Bill said, here, take this mandolin. You know how to pick one. Take this mandolin, let me have your guitar. So I handed him my guitar and he handed me his mandolin, of course. I got weak in the knees. Now, that was the mandolin that started bluegrass music, so it made me a little nervous. But we picked a few numbers, and he accompanied me on, the, on my guitar here and uh, had a good little session there. But I got to play that $3 million mandolin. I think that's what they valued it at when they put it in the museum. Oh. But that, that was a real honor that he would hand me his mandolin. Of course, he could see I, my guitar hadn't got a scratch on it. Oh, the pick guard has. <laughs> That's a new pick guard. I've got the old one in the case. But, uh, yeah, we had a good jam session that day. And we had a natural acoustic area. It was in a, between two buildings and the, uh, concrete stairway that came down. That stairwell had great acoustics and we played there all afternoon. Uh, but 
I was at Bean Blossom at Bill's Festival there in, uh, I think it was 1969. Uh, sat down with Doc Watson under a tree, and of course I matched him note for note because I'd learned everything off of his albums. And he thought this was such a good sounding guitar. I let him play it, and uh, oh man, that's the best this thing has ever sounded with him playing it. Because he just had had something special in his music. If you hear his picking, you, you'd know it right away. Uh, his style was so good. Of course, I did the picking right along with him, but I made a different sound than he did. Uh, and that's, that's all in the hands uh, to make that different sound. But this thing's been a lot of miles. It's been played a lot in the great outdoors, in the sun, in the shade, been played in the wintertime, summertime. Uh, it's trucked a lot of miles. It went to my uh, army base when I was in advanced infantry training before I went to Vietnam. Uh, I kept it in my locker, but it, yeah, it's been through the mill, but it's still in excellent condition. I took really good care of it. And of course, my old pig guard didn't have a scratch on it, but where the heat and everything had shrunk it up, I had it glued back on one time, stretched out and glued back on. Rural Yarber did that for me. Uh, that's one I bought my banjo from. But uh, it shrunk up again when I pulled it out of the case this last time, been sitting in the in the safe for a couple of years and it had pulled loose and shrunk up so I just peeled it off and put a new new pick guard on it but this that deep mellow sound and that's what that that top does for it with that wide spruce grain gives it such a mellow tone I just, I keep hoping that the use of my hands is going to come back like anything near what it used to be, but I, in reality, I know that's not going to happen, but I'm going to keep working and keep pushing and try to get it better. Yeah, and I ran across a picture of... Oh. It's the only signature that I ever got from a famous person, <laughs> Ralph Stanley. And uh, he signed this in his living room. And he put to Dennis, Dr. Ralph Stanley. And that pen that he signed it with was one of those that the ink fades when it's in natural light. And I had it hanging up here uh, in a room in the dormer on the front of the house there and of course the bright sunlight reflected in there it faded out you can see the indention where he signed it but you can't read it oh, I've got to hang that on the wall that's the only signature of any artist I've got but I thought well before he's gone I've got to got to do that uh, a friend of mine was doing family tree with him of course he's distant cousin to he was distant cousin to Ralph Stanley but uh, well I love them hills of Virginia up there I thought about seriously moving up there but the people next door to my friends at their old home place he wouldn't sell the place. And, uh, but I would love to have that 20 acres up there. I don't know that I'd want to live in Virginia now, though. But. I should have had a good story to tell along with that 
little tidbit. But I just had to get another video made, but I was, I was planning on doing some practicing before I did that and get a song or something ready. But I tell you, it's so hard to find, well, all the music I've known is all copyrighted stuff. And one thing I don't need to do is get a copyright strike this early in my YouTube channel. Uh, and of course, I'm in the junky side of my studio. I'm trying to set up my desk and everything, and I've got, I've got, all kind of pedals and microphones and got another amp down here and uh, cords for microphones and I'm still looking for my uh, Shure 58s. I've got two of them and I can't find either one. I've been looking for them for several weeks and I, I think I put them in a suitcase which I was making for being able to carry mics and little amps and stuff. A uh, few weeks I want to get a another amplifier ordered, which is a uh, small amplifier. It's uh, Amp 1 by Blackstar, a uh, 100 watt amp. And of course I've got the Stomp Man, and then I want to get an Amp Man also, but I need some small portable stuff. I can do my acoustic or electric, uh, carry it all in one bag. Now I got several pedal boards built, and let me shut this camera off and I'll uh, now this is going to be a pedal board. I got bought this aluminum ruler cheaper than I can buy the aluminum strips at Lowe's to put across here and then put the Velcro on it. Uh, I'll put four, four strips across there and then put Velcro on them. And uh, what a mess I've got made in this corner. I had, I've taken out a desk. I've got it stacked right there, the parts of it. I had a desk here with a computer and stuff on it. And uh, I got a big box of books. I've got to put a bookshelf in there and get all those books out so I can get stuff in here on this rack. Uh, I think I really want to put this down on the bottom and then put another couple of amps up here. But anyway, that's going to make a beautiful pedal board. It's just an ATV ramp. Uh, <laughs> I got got a bunch of those on. They had a bunch that they were closing out. And I don't know. I think I gave about twenty dollars a set or less for them. And I mean, those things are expensive, but I got them so cheap, and I I used them for all different kind of little projects. And I've got several more of them. But they're gonna make nice pedal boards. I've got some fluorescent green paint to paint the aluminum strips to put on there. Ought to be pretty colorful. But I've got all kind of new pedals. I'm building several different boards. These Sonicake pedals, I got a bunch of them. They're, they're good pedals. Cheap don't mean no good. Cheap usually means they're still pretty solid. Uh, in electronics now, they can they can do just about anything with pedals. But uh, yeah, I just felt like I needed to put out another video. I just don't have a real good story tonight. I do. Uh, uh, I really dread tomorrow. I don't really want to go and eat a lot. I just hadn't felt real good, but uh, 
I just had to showcase that guitar. And I just wasn't prepared with anything to play. So I think I'll get on with this. I, I've got about two or three days of cleaning up this corner and getting it reorganized. I'm telling you, when you start moving stuff, and I had everything set up, and then, no, I need to put that over there and this over here. And when you do that, you got to run the cables. <laughs> Rearrange all the cables. And then I realized I needed some 25-foot cables. I need some more 20-foot cables for speaker cables. And I just got a new upper rack for my keyboard. So I've got both my keyboard stack, which clears that corner where my drums are over there. I've got another computer over there. Uh, I don't want to show the studio until I get everything cleaned up and organized. I've got stuff piled on this desk right here. It's all these small things. Uh, I've got a volume pedal and a wah pedal. <laughs> and of course, this is my desk over here that has got my mixing boards on it. I've got covers on all them right now. But I tell you, it takes forever to set up a studio, and then you get it set up, and then you you want to expand things, and then you got to redo everything. All the wiring has to be changed. You got to pull cables in other directions. So I'm hoping in the next week I can have this organized. It's a lot better than it was <laughs> when I started moving things again. But it takes forever to get things lined up. Well, as I always say, if it can, it will. And I guess I'm old and crackadated still. Oh, well, I guess I better turn this off.